You mentioned the Christian Research Institute case that uh, suggested that trial judges may deny a fee request in its entirety if the request is is too overreaching. Uh, I don't know that I have seen a, a trial judge follow that suggestion. Have you? Well, Christian Research was an interesting one because it did not, they denied 90% of the fees, so it was pretty close to a clear thing. But however, Mark can discuss an interesting case called Martinez versus O'Hara, and it was published not for the fee result, but for something interesting. So why don't I let Mark talk a little bit about the Martinez case, and that one will answer your question on what happened with the fees. Yes, the unpublished part of the case, which Mike and I were most interested in, was about attorney's fees. And we didn't try the case in the court below. We handled the appeal. And the plaintiff's attorney, uh, after a jury trial uh, that lasted over five, at least five days, ob obtained an award of $8,080. He had originally asked the jury for an award of half a million dollars. And then he made a fee motion asking for, I think, $146,000. And Commissioner, then Commissioner uh, Carmen Luegi, denied the request in its entirety. And she gave a number of different reasons, which are almost additive. First of all, she relied on a case called Chavez versus City of Los Angeles. And that was a FIHA case in which the plaintiff asked for $871,000 in fees, but obtained a, an award of only $11,500. And in the Chavez case, which was earlier, the court denied the request in its entirety it said the test was, uh, the, the, the request was bloated, it was over litigated. Um, the case could have been brought in limited jurisdiction because the award was significantly under $25,000. The case didn't um, really benefit the public much. It was for the benefit of the individual plaintiff, uh, Chavez. Uh, and uh, those considerations were also the considerations in the Chavez, in the uh, Martinez versus O'Hara case that we handled. In that case, the plaintiff uh, obtained an award of $8,080 at trial, and uh, the judge uh, thought that it was a modest success that the case had been over litigated and not very successful. And the amount that was uh, obtained could, was an amount well within the limited jurisdiction of the court. But on top of all of that, the council's uh, billing records in the opinion of the court were very unreliable because there were instances in which he had billed 15 hours a day more than once. And I think in one instance, he may have billed 25 hours in a day. And all of that uh, meant that the uh, billing records didn't convince the judge. Also, the billing records had been reconstructed after the fact. They were not contemporaneous. So on the basis of that, of, of all those different factors, the judge uh, entirely denied the attorney's fees that went up to the Court of Appeal in the Fourth District Division Three. Justice Feibel wrote the opinion and he affirmed uh, the decision below. Uh, the, the, the published part of the opinion had to do with some of the language that the opposing attorney had used in his briefing and in his appeals. He referred to the trial judges succubustic, which is yeah. pretty much a non-existent term, but 
means a, we, uh, a, female, a female mystical female she demon and he yeah. called her order disgraceful and uh he said that the opinion uh, uh was created reverse peristalsis which i guess was his way of saying that it made him want to throw up and the <laughs> court of appeal did, did not like that and wondered why one would ever put words like that in, nope. in nope. an appeal. Nor, nor did the, uh, the state bar court, uh, but I recall that uh, lawyer was suspended briefly. He went up and challenged it. And I think last month there was an update on that case saying, by merely calling that judge a name, succubistic, uh, that alone was not a basis for discipline. Interesting. But some of the other things he said, suggesting that this trial judge had intentionally not applied the law and uh, other disrespectful things said in the in the notice of appeal were found to be a basis of uh, discipline. It's a fascinating case. That, that That's right. You've got it exactly right, Jeff. And the fact is that we as attorneys have very broad First Amendment rights when we advocate. And that includes the rights that we would have if we were sued in a defamation lawsuit so that if we use language that expresses an opinion rather than a fact, um, it's hard to sanction the attorney or convict someone in a defamation case um, if, uh, if we state something that's true, uh, we can't be sanctioned. But even so, we ought to exercise common sense, even if it doesn't <laughs> mean that the words we, we use necessarily result in discipline, we still need to exercise common sense. And especially at the appeal level, because my experience, and I, I know it's Mike's experience, is that the justices, and that certainly includes our local court, which is excellent, they're not real impressed by over-the-top language in an appeal. In fact, it's a turnoff. Yeah, adjectives are never going to win your argument. Mm -hmm.